Welcome to Linda Strickland Art, No Rules Watercolor. I'm Linda, this is Schooner, and today we will be painting a sunset sky. If you are new to watercolor, you may want to check out my setting up and getting started videos on my YouTube channel, Linda Strickland Art. It is my goal to give you just enough information so that you feel confident to paint exuberantly. So grab some brushes and let's get started. Today we're painting a sunset sky. So if you're painting with my watercoloring cards, Coastal Cousins bundle, um, I'm gonna be painting the palm tree. This also works really beautifully on the seagulls. As you can see, my mom painted this painting. So this is uh, today a sunset sky, as I said, but this technique can be used in a variety of painting situations, as you'll see. So it's gonna start out similar to, to the video where we did the painting a white subject. And I'm gonna get just clean water on my brush I'm going to put water on everything that is the sky. I think I'll go around this sun or moon. I guess it's the sun if it's a sunset. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go around the sun for now and leave it. Leave it with no water on it. Remember, paint goes where the water is. I'm not going to worry too much about the edges of the palm tree because they're kind of fringy and wispy. And if a little sunset color gets on them, it doesn't hurt a thing. So just wetting the area. Okay, I don't know if you can see. The shiny is where the water is, and I can kind of see where I've missed. Alrighty. Now you're gonna paint just like the rainbow. I'm gonna start with yellow. I'm gonna run some yellow across here. Pretty. Clean my brush. I'm going to pick up some orange now. This is kind of easy because you just move around the palette. Put the orange in next. Kind of in bands, but don't get too, don't get too stripey with it. Of course, the fact that the paper is wet will kind of take care of all that for you. I don't know that that orange is strong enough. Let's really, if you're gonna put orange in, let's just put some in, there we go. Now we're talking. Okay, next is the Opera Red, which is really a bright, gorgeous, singing pink. So what's happening is you've, you've got a, a, a leading edge that is wet. So as you touch the next color into it, it starts to blend and make the pretty colors that you can't really make on your own. So I've got, got a nice wet edge. This isn't really blending right here, the yellow into the orange, so I'm gonna help it along. And then I'm feeling the urge to just splatter some. There we go. Yeah, I like that edge better. I don't want it to look like stripes. All right, there's the pink. Next, we're gonna go to the manganese blue. I skipped over that dark red. We don't need two reds. Though we've got several blues. Notice I'm not being too careful with the edges of the palm tree. We'll fix that because um, they're gonna be green. And then um, the dark blue. Ultramarine. My juicy puddle. My colors are mixing together. And then if you really want to get crazy and you want like purple at the top, you can put the mix up, mix the pink with the ultramarine blue and put some purple up there. Okay, that's kind of pretty. I'm gonna turn it back around this way and let it all kind of run. Whoops. I probably want to paint that. Paint all the way to the edge. Okay. Moving a little bit. If it doesn't move enough for you, you can take just water. I've got clean, a clean brush. Oh look, I did a swirl. <laughs> and just kind of throw some water on it. Gives you a little texture and hopefully you'll get it moving. You know me, I like it to run and drip and move. There it goes. Okay. So I'm happy with how that looks. Now, so this is explain the drawing. This is the sand or the beach. 
this kind of triangle shape is the water and then that's the sky. So in a sunset on the water, these colors are reflected back into the water. Now, we don't have a lot of room to get all that rolling, so I'm gonna kind of just, just kind of do a, um, a little abbreviated version of what I just did into the um, water. I should have gotten it wet first, it would move better. But if you use a lot of water, you'll get the same effect. Okay, and I'm gonna quickly get to the blue because, you know, it's water. See, I'm kind of running out of room for the blue right there. Let's see what happens. Remember, as long as it's wet, shiny wet, you can continue to play with the color and mix things in. Now I'm gonna go this way. <laughs> See if I can get this to move a little bit. Now, I'm not real happy with that, but I'm gonna leave it alone and let it dry and then I can always fix it later. I didn't do a good job there. And maybe I got a little too much there. So I can lift some of this off. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, I have a dry painting. I You can let them air dry. I dried mine with a blow dryer. It doesn't hurt a thing. Some cool stuff happened in the sky. That's what we're looking for, that watercolory magical stuff. So I've got clean water. I've cleaned out my mixing area of my palette and I'm ready to go paint my palm tree. So I'm gonna jump right in and attack those green fronds. So I'm gonna get my green, make a juicy puddle. Probably a lot of it. There's a lot of green on here. Okay. So if you remember the, if you've watched the getting started video on how to use your brush, you're supposed to put it down and mop. So that's the rule. And here's the no rule. We're gonna get up on the tip and do these little fringy things. Now I am gonna mop down here, but I'm gonna get, use the tip to put some color on these fronds. You know how they're fringy and ruffly and they blow in the breeze? Now, um, green on its own, isn't that delightful to me? I like to drop colors in. So I'm gonna put a little, you know, they have yellow in on some of them. Or even, even brown, I think. Um, and then blue in the darker areas. They're darker in the middle. I'm gonna move, spread this around. And make some ruffly edges. It's good to leave little windows of white, little glimmers in there if you can. I kind of mixed up the blue and the green here. Some of it's dark, some of it's light, some of it's shadowy, some of it's not. Let's try this bright yellow, see how that looks. Feel the need to splatter. Okay, so um, I'm not happy with that, but while it's cooking, I'm gonna drag some of this green right down the trunk and keep moving with it. So the trunk is a little more brown. But rather than painting the green and then painting the uh, brown, I'm gonna let it all run together. And I'm gonna paint down what I think is the shadow side, which is in this drawing, the right side. I'm gonna put the darks down that. So that's burnt sienna <laughs> with a little bit of the blue and the green mixture running into it. I'm gonna clean my brush off. I have just water now. I'm just gonna kind of push this around, leaving some white. That's cool. If I wanna make it look shadow, more shadowy, I can put blue in it. 
really burnt sienna and ultramarine blue kind of makes the perfect bark or tree trunk color. Um, okay. I'm going to put a little more yellow up in here. This is kind of boring to me. It's really wet. Okay. I'm going to let that dry and or let it cook for a little bit and see what happens with it. This is perfectly dry, so now I can separate out the sky from the water. And I'm gonna do that by putting just the smallest blue line right here. Well, that's not so small. Nice and light. I might drag this down. There, now hopefully that reads as two different planes, water and sky. I think that was enough. Okay, to get a little color on the sand, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna clean off my mixing area because I filled it up. I'm gonna use this raw sienna color. Mix up a juicy puddle. And now I am just gonna mop this thing. Here we can put a little dry brush in maybe, if I can pull it off, let's see. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, a little bit of, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of, I wanna put pink in there, but you know me, I wanna put pink in everything. Let me just splatter some pink in there and see how that looks, just to give it some interest. Okay, now, I'm going to put some more darks back into the trunk. I've got the ultramarine blue and the brown again. I'm just going to kind of make it darker. Yeah, that worked. All right, I'm at a point now where this needs to dry so that I can put the shadows on the tree. Okay, now I need to put the shadow in, which is easy and hard at the same time. So it's not drawn in into the, the drawing because I think the hard edged lines of the ink wouldn't, wouldn't be right for a shadow. So I'm gonna show you. You can take a number two pencil on dry paper, it has to be completely dry, and just draw out a shadow shape. The sh a cast shadow is always attached to, it connects to, whatever it's shadowing. <laughs> and then you can take a lot of liberties with a cast shadow. They're any shape you want them to be. Um, that looks like a palm tree to me. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna take the manganese blue, mix up my juicy puddle, and I'm just gonna draw in my shadowy shape. It doesn't have to be too perfect. Don't worry about it too much. That might be a little too perfect, actually. Um, and then this is a shadowy shape right here around the tree. You could give it palm fronds if you want. It could just be a shape. I like to put a little, um, no surprise, a little pink in it, a little color into it, and just let it move around. Maybe a little bit of yellow also. Let's see what happens if we put some yellow in there. The shadows can be as pretty as the painting itself and as playful. Just don't, don't overpaint. Okay, I'm not happy with this palm tree. It's a little boring, it's kind of all the same. So I'm gonna add the darks in. I don't know if you can see what adding the darks on the trunk did. Gives it some punch and some, some detail, some oomph. So, Darks being this darker blue, and I'm gonna mix a little green in with it and see if I can't find a few more of these front palm fronds here and some detaily wispy things on them. You can get as detailed with this as you want or as unfinished as you want. Again, it's your painting. Paint it the way, paint your own painting.
Now I'm up on the tip of the brush, you know, kind of like I told you not to do when we, in the getting started video. I'm gonna drop a little bit of this sienna color in, kind of a natural color. And that looks a little more palm tree like. So notice I didn't do them all the same. You, you don't want it like, what happens is you think, well, that looked good. Let's do it everywhere. And then it gets boring. So do some, leave some unfinished. Like I didn't even touch that. I think I'll leave it like that. Less is better than more in this situation. I think I'm gonna leave the sun white because I kind of like that little punch of white there. I'm gonna um, splatter. I want to splatter down here because I had, you know, I'm really kind of messy and that all those blue specks are from my laying my hand on there and I got paint on it. So I'm going to splatter right there just because it's interesting maybe. Maybe I'll use the manganese blue. There. I feel better about that. And that sunset sky. Thank you for watching Linda Strickland Art No Rules Watercolor. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and comment below if you have any questions and please post photos of your watercolors, both the fabulous successes and the exuberant fails. See you next time.